Okay, welcome to another edition of Kev's Workshop. So I'm looking here at the tail car of the Speed of Progress as it was back in the day when it's still brand new. Now, a lot of you which have seen perhaps previous videos I know of the, the Hornby version, Hornby Trains. It's a 1980s release, you can tell by the way that these wheels are. <coughs> all plastic. The 1970s edition had metal axles. Um, the, ax the plastic axles around the metal shaft, so they're left and right halves. Those are all one piece wheels and axles. And the 1970s edition did not have this little screw and cap. But that's what they were trying to do back in the 70s and 80s is do the spirit of progress. There's the other end of the carriage in a much better way than they did originally. However, these are more or less the Southern Aurora cars from New South Wales, repainted in Victorian Rail colour scheme. Well, I do have the entire set, so if you look up on YouTube my video titled Wombat Flats or um, any of my videos, you should see the Spirit of Progress complete as it was, or as I had it. And then um, you should also see uh, the, the shots of the uh, Southern Aurora. Now, after looking at this coach, this roof here is something I've actually rebuilt. This was for the tail car, and yes, the tail car was nice and rounded, as you saw in the black and white shot a moment ago. What I've done, it's not necessarily the best of joins. Not necessarily the, the best of things because when Hornby first built these things they stuffed it up by um, having corrugated roofs with two little ridges down the side as you can see here. Here's the original train roof, my filling in the middle and the rest of the original Hornby train roof. I've painted this in the um, Humbrol Paints number 14, French Blue and you see I'm having to use two rather unorthodox screws to, in order to um, hold the, the roof down. Hornby's version was this little grey piece of plastic. That's where you, know, you would have had two of these. One to hold the roof down and one uh, in order to hold the interior down, which is what this one's for. So I've had to make up a whole new mounting block. A way of strengthening up the roof. And I've added in a second mounting point just to ensure this damn roof is going to stay put because there should be a clip here if I get this little notch in that should be a nice little plastic clip in clip there and that goes into the bodywork of the carriage so what I've done several years ago I've made the Spirit of Progress in N scale this Hornby Train coach and this roof is for the HO scale version if you look around over here, all this junk I've got, <laughs> that's the tail car which I'm in the process of working on. I do need to add in details underneath the floor. I'll do that later. You can see it was the Trans Australian logo that's on it. This is a 1970s car with 1980s bogies. I've actually made up a doorway where the doorway should be. So yes, it'd be a little bit sacrilegious you know, in order to uh, modify a, an old train car. Maybe for the fact these cars are hard to come by. Now, Hornby's put a door here and one over here. You see this window's not quite right, neither am I. However, if we were to follow the plans, there's a guards compartment, and then where these two windows are, You've got the men's and ladies' toilets together in the guards' compartment here. Technically there was no door in this corner, ever, according to these plans and the information that I've got. This door was there, however. That door has always been there on the full-size car. That's what I'm referring to. Opposite side of this door, you can see where the, the plastic window stops, that, that is another door over there. So there's two, two exactly opposite doors on the full-size carriage. 
and when the carriage was brand new there was a bigger window here of course than what, what Hornby put in but later in its life it ended up getting a recessed doorway put into it so I'm just kind of going to disguise this because I'm you know, typically Australian half assed lazy nah not quite lazy but half assed about it never mind I'll come back to that joke later that's the interior for this particular carriage that's mostly correct for doing the Spirit of Progress staircase to the upstairs Vista Dome area is not this one here because it's American setup it's got a, a bar there all these areas I've done with black texture are areas I need to remove but what I feel I'm going to need to do instead is build a brand new interior but that's pfft, later on if I if I decide to do it if I spin this around for you you can now see this from the opposite side a bit hard to see the light glare, there you go this area here this wall actually went across at an angle so, whoops, I'm losing my camera position here right, so this end, this end wall, if I do this this way that wall will come through to the end of the carriage up about here sort of thing but yeah, never mind so this would have been all the guards compartment these two here, instead of having chairs uh, yeah, chairs in them and individual compartments they would have been the male and female toilets in this, these two and then these two compartments here on the actual Victorian railway coach wouldn't have existed however from about here this is where the doorway would be this compartment here down to where this bar is that was a smoker's compartment and then from down here is the lounge or as I call it the parlour car section just to clarify some of that if I can do this without knocking everything flying I'll move the carriage out of the way and I'll bring up my information that I'm working from so I'll leave you the other information behind sorry about the mic there people with the original back end you can see there's no door but it's a bit of progress logo on the back and it's original bogies as built that's a detail I've got to add in under the floor with these two battery boxes Hornby's already got something like this down here so I'm going to leave it if I was to do it properly then I'd have to do all the details exact now looking at here you can see the, the end carriage door and the intermediate door bit further down when we come down here to the plans you can see the floor plan as it used to be brand new in 1937 so you can sort of see how you can do this without dropping everything. If I was to go off the 1937 plan, totally incorrect. Right, so you can get an idea how incorrect this really is. But it's close enough, and if we can move things around a bit, pass the lighting and all that, here's the original 1937 configuration. So from there you can sort of see what I'm up against. Now a bit later on, in 1958, I'll just go to there, see? Just confirmed, 1937 and 1958, the floor plan had changed considerably. What was that? Became that. That's the middle area, which I was looking at cutting out and modifying. Again I'll for the original hobby details get this happening so you can sort of see where the bar is here curved bar and staircase all this bit in the middle and tables and chairs became the club room the buffet and everything and then again you can see the ladies toilets men's toilets and guard compartment in the new configuration Come up here, there's original walkways, original three doors, and the fourth if you include the carriage end door. That's the new configuration in 1958. 
if we come down here, I'm going to reverse this interior. This is not in 63 floor plan. It is so close in some regards to the original and to the um, 963 format. I'm not even going to bother with it. Down here is where everything else was put for the bar and all that. So under here, that's where the bar would be. Not so much here where it is, but over here. So all this arrangement of chairs, tables and so on would look like this with a corridor. Then you come up here to where the two intermediate doors are. That swaps sides and the corridor is only short. It's on the opposite side. And the guards compartment is completely missing. Sorry, look at the thing back in... Oh, bloody gravity. So let's sit this down here. So you can see where this corridor is down the side here. Once it's re reduced back to this, all this area here became open. No guards compartment, no toilets. This is what you had. And yeah, technically there is a bathroom there of some description. But all the guards compartment is now missing. So I think when I look at these plants I go which one do I model as far as an interior? Well, if nobody else notices a difference, I'm not going to bother with it. Sorry folks. <laughs> that's, that's my opinion on this particular thing. But if I'm going to do it properly, I see the carriages are sheet metal sides all the way through. The whole train was like this. Riveted steel on the outside. Large windows. And from Actually, my memories of riding this train in the 1980s. This tail car wasn't on board the train that I, when I rode it. But this is the Melbourne to Sydney train. And yeah, the interiors were beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, what I remember. So it must have been a gorgeous train in its day. So um, that would have been all royal blue with gold buff lining. And then the gold spirit of progress on the... Uh, progress on the back and up here on the sides would have had the VR writing along the top as well first class second class and so on this is a working folder I'm, I'm showing you part of and if I turn around that's basically the same carriage now and I'm guessing in 2018 where we are that uh, this carriage would still be in existence I believe it's preserved so, you see there, it's called the parlour car, and the carriages give the name Norman. This is the sort of detail I'll need to put underneath my HO scale one. So I'm going to just put these, these boxes in underneath here. <coughs> the air compressor or whatever, the refrigeration, all that bit there. Uh, I may or may not be too particular about it. You see here the windows are reduced in size, and it's obviously where the bar was positioned at the 1958. Um, sorry, 1963 modification. There's the intermediate door that I've made on the carriage. It's got three large windows. You notice the end door is missing. So there should be a door there, but it isn't. So that door's been removed. So that'll give you an idea on the carriage as it is now. It'll be preserved somewhere in Victoria. And if I flip this over to the very last page in this folder and not drop it on the floor that's the tail view see how the door is recessed so that was a later modification to the carriage it's now as you can see in like a mustard roof colour and like a, a brown brownish tinge sort of paint job with yellow lining and it has a buffer plate on the back I'm sorry to bore any of you who find, finds this boring but basically I've created many years ago a folder that's dedicated to the Spirit of Progress this is my working folder that's the train in its day full 13 car train with parlour car on the back double guards fan baggage car in the front directly behind the loco 
and the S-Class steam engine which was modified from a standard loco to a streamlined loco given a brand new tender and this is how I've modelled it in N scale it's a nice inspirational promo shot from Victorian Railways and if I go put it through here you can see the cutaway drawing that was done shows the inner workings and outer workings perhaps but yeah, anyone wanting a copy of all these, I can always photocopy it up and post it onto you for cost. I'm not here to make any money or any profit. But I do have a lot of information I researched up many years ago. The S classes, you see this one's called Edward Henty, stupid name but probably a nice person, um, which it's named after. These S classes, there was only four of them ever made. All four of them were converted to streamline. That's their numbers and names accordingly. When I name and number my N scale one, it'll be 300 class leader, which we call Matthew Flinders. And even 301's Thomas Mitchell. That to me sounds like a much better name than Henty. CJ de Trobe. All these people might have been nice people, might have been important people in Victorian time. But I'll tell you what, oh, don't worry about the surnames. Anyway, Spirit Consist back in 1937. That's just some of the information about it. So, um, that'll give you some idea of the, um, the weights of the train. So the first car's there at the back, the dining. Second car's at the front. Guards van, then your tender, then your loco. That is the way the, the train was set up. So all your second classes, I'm also got the, the two baggage cars, all your second classes, your dining, and your first classes, and your parlour car right at the back. And a guy called Peter Clark had compiled this information on the Spirit of Progress. There are three different um, parts on this, and just to confirm where I'm getting the information. Australian Model Railway Magazine, February edition of 1992, page 43 onwards. And if I flick these through, the standard Victorian Railways colours of blue with the yellow gold buff, whichever way you want to pronounce it. That's repainted for the Overland, which is the Melbourne to Adelaide train. That's what I call undecorated. You notice how the, the ends of the carriages had a little taper. And that had a, a vestibule across carriage to carriage back in the day to make it look like one continuous train. V-line colours. And then the V-line tangerine colours. Not much of a fan on that. It's very bland. Even having that V-line colour scheme there, it's a little more appealing than something like that or that. However, I'm just trying to skip through this as quickly as I can. This here again is a tail car. Notice the door's missing off this end, but it's got the intermediate door a bit further down. There where the bar was put in, there's its name, Norman. And it's connected up to a cholesterol roof carriage there. So, if I can do this without dropping everything and all that. There's so much more information in this. B-class loco on the front, which is a double-ended version. The S-class diesel was a single-ended version. And I believe, originally, I think these were broad gauge. Yes, when uh, standard could have it wrong, but regardless, that's the carriage I had to scratch build in N scale, which is one of the two parcel um, baggage cars. So, um, 
Yeah, I didn't do too bad a job of it. And there's Norman as it stands in a different colour scheme for the V-line. You can sort of see there the door. And in amongst, oh, yeah, I've got it right. In amongst this tabulation of classifications, a bit of information that has been compiled for us. Anyone chasing up information on the spirit of progress? Anyone from Melbourne or Victoria wants to model it? Or anyone in Australia, anyone in the world wants to model this great Australian train? This was otherwise known as the Melbourne to Sydney Express. And you'll see here uh, Wimmera, Mitamita and Mirabool and Tangil. They were all basically the um, dining cars. That gives you an idea when they were built. Unfortunately, this carriage was scrapped in 1982. That built in 1938. DS and CS is one of the one of the two um, baggage cars, if I remember rightly. Before I go flipping pages, see so it does go into the colour schemes and lettering. There's just a little bit of it for anyone who's looking at it. See. Both colour was Dulux Royal Blue with gold leaf being used for the trim. So there you go, a bit of inf info there for you. So, again this is from the February 1992 issue of the Australian Model Rail magazine. It was known as AMRM. And up here is a bit more information. But then in amongst here... Um, We've got a little chart. Yeah, sorry about that. Just trying to get this in to, to go right without going out of focus. That's some other information for you. So if we skip off the end of that article and onto part two, which is the April 1992 edition. Pick this up at an angle. You see two New South Wales C38 class locos, which is 38, 13, and 30, double heading, and they've got the Victorian cars in trail behind them. So, yes, that would have been a beautiful sight to see back in the day. And according to the article, it's seen on Goonda Curve. Between Binalong and Bow sorry, Bowning. I almost pronounced it wrong. I'll bring it up for you, see? Between Binalong and Bowning. Yeah. Trans transferring the first spirit set to Sydney for the commencement. No, no, sorry, I've got to get out of the Santa Gage service in April 1962. So, so that's. That special commemoration. Somewhere in, I do have a colour photo of that, which came off a calendar. And again, there's so much information. When you look at the interior, there's a quite a spacious carriage internally. So, and the the, um, the dawning car, you know. How's that? Actually, it's probably inside Norman for memory. Which is a tail car, a parlor car. So, yeah, yes. Yeah. Spirit of Progress, Buffet car. So, if I skip past all this, there's pages worth of information. If we go up to here, it shows it in much better colour schemes. When you look at the traditional Victorian railways colours, and they look rather beautiful in the blue and yellow. 
New South Wales Candy Stripe Colour Scheme on either end. New South Wales 86. I think it's in a museum now. I'll scrap that loco. But hey, never mind. This is the colour scheme that I've modelled the train in N scale. So therefore I'm doing it in HO. Using what I'm able to get a hold of. Powerline have the actual coaches uh, made. And they're $150 a coach in 2017, 2018. And at that price, I can't afford it. But $20 a coach. I can afford a $20 coach and tart it up. There's the S-Class in its original configuration. Looks a bit like a Flying Scotsman logo. But that's its original tender. When they're streamlined up for the uh, Spirit of Progress, they've got the front cowling, top cowling, side valances. And then they were given a brand new tender, much larger capacity. So looking into here. So I'm trying to hold the camera and, and paper, or folder in this case. It'll give you an idea. So that's the standard and streamlined, uh, or the original and rebuilt version of the exact same locos. Out of the four of these that were built, three of them ended up getting scrapped. The last sole surviving one, there's so much infighting about it, I decided to scrap that as well. So no one got to have it. There's your DS, your bulk mail van. That's on a scratch built in. Rough floor plan and general arrangement drawings. And if I can do this, there it is there. I'm going to skip past the rest of this now. Because what I'm coming to, and so boring you to death, that's the coach as it is at the moment. I'm in the process of brush painting it on purpose. But somebody has replaced the windows, has glued all the plastic in, and um, I couldn't rip it out without destroying it all. So there's the original Trans Australian colour scheme. All this detail underneath here is going to get cleaned up, and all well, those repainted black. I've put a fresh bit of window in there, that's where that bit of window got destroyed cutting the door in. And you'll notice the difference where I've stopped painting for the time being. Yeah. That's where I've stopped painting. So this is what I'm looking at doing and of course if you've got one of these cars, might as well paint the lower valance in on the back of these, even though they're bogey mounted. Stay tuned because in a moment I'll change camera shots and I'll have a lot more done to it. Magic of uh, digital photography or videography. Okay, here we are from a slightly different perspective. The plastic and now have just given a single coat of Riley Paints Deep Indian Red. And by leaving the paint streaky like it is. The idea or effect I'm trying to give is a wood grain effect. So I remember some of the uh, compartments in the Spirit of Progress they had this beautiful highly polished wood grain. So I've done this area here where the gas compartment and toilet area is. And then just to highlight things, I've just done the bar area, so the staircase. So once the roof goes on this thing, Hopefully it won't look too bad. A bit later on I'll paint these chairs up. And then that way they won't block plastic inside. But to give you a quick impression of what it's like. I'll drop that into there for now. And if I can try to achieve. With lighting, should look alright. Okay, yes, should be cold all through there. That'll be modified later on, of course. Hopefully, if you're looking in and there's lighting in the carriage, hopefully, it'll have the effect 
that. Yeah, so it's sitting proper. That's got it. Hopefully it'll have the effect that internally there's wood grain walls here in the staircase area. Even if you're lucky enough to see in the carriage and see the bar. So, different perspective. So hopefully, it'll have that sense of realism once it's completed. There's no real window here to look into, just a stop for the um, catch on the roof. So, we've not really gone to too much degree of detail. That's basically what we're looking at. So a bit later on, I'll probably modify things again. The only other thing, once I've got this put back together, and... Um, sorted. Probably put interior lighting in it and set the tail lights on the train just to add to that little extra. And um, the underfloor detail which is to go in yet. That way it won't look as bare. Bear with me a minute. I'll change perspectives around another shot. Okay, it's just just got the roof sitting on there at the moment, no screws holding it. I'll give you an idea from this particular angle. I'll put the yellow lining on it later. It'll give you some idea what I've cut out of the roof. That's the Vista Dome section. That used to sit this patch of roof now sits. And then come back here. There's a lower valance that used to sit underneath here. And because they don't have them on the Australian South, um, Spirit of Progress, there's no point having them on this version either. Again, I say it's a little bit sacrilegious, or sacrilege to cut away. Some decent parts. The carriage is fairly rare, I suppose, in one sense. But when they're a dime a dozen, you don't mind. So, if I'd be able to make them with this full length roof and no Vista Dome, I would have been happy. Save me the, eff the effort. And then, just for a different point of view. There's the other side of it. So I've cut the extra door in midway down. Tried to fill in the corner door. Hopefully it's going along the main line. Nobody will notice too much about, about it being incorrect. That's where the bar windows are on that side. Should be on the opposite side of the carriage. <laughs> I'm not being too pedantic on this one. Yeah, so there's a look all the way around the carriage. Oh, my belly in the background. Oh well. Get that. So that'll become the new tail car for the Spirit of Progress. Moment temperatures drop down to 27 degrees Celsius from about 32, but the humidity is high on the day of this recording. So, there you go, one speed of progress tail car almost complete. Thanks for watching, and probably show you another video later on on Wombat Flats layout of it in use with the rest of the consist. What I might just do before we finish off this one is 
it's on a downhill roll, so I won't, ro won't bother railing it properly, but imagine all these intermediate cars. And there's a dining car we've got in this consist. And then there's a tail car. Okay. Thanks for watching. Catch ya. Okay folks, here we are now at least a week later from the previous bit of viewing. So here I've finally painted the yellow lining on. It's for me a lot quicker and easier to just paint the damn lining and be done with it. So if I had to wait and try to get some decals, I could be waiting forever. And those, I'll put some underfloor detail. Yeah, the one piece does look a little bit tapered, I know. But these items here, if I swing around, are actually based on this photo. It's the only shot I seem to find of this damn carriage. If we zoom in a bit closer on, there's the details I'm trying to make for this trying coach. These parts here are considered done by Hornby. These three boxes, this is part of the air conditioning and battery boxes. They're the three I've just added in on this side of the, co of the coach. The coach you see is called Norman. You see where the windows for the bar are actually elevated. Won't be stuffed up with that. So based on the American coaches. So if we look back over here, so you what I mean how the bar windows are down low, not up high. So at least with that, that's one of many stuff ups. So underneath here, I'll just fix this piece up in a moment, which is I don't know probably part of the air compressor or um, refrigeration side of things. But these battery boxes are now located. You might notice there's four of them. You can see two front ones, one of the rears. And if I come around this way, you might see the other rear one. Make life a little bit easier. That's the additions I've put in underneath. And yes, there is the opposite side of the coach. So at least you can now see the add-ons. See the door a little clearer. Or I've actually tried to panel up. The Hornby door shouldn't have been there. However, never mind. So try change things around a little. I'll see a sec. I've tried to paint the interior with brown, because they were wooden panelled, like a walnut finish, highly gloss. So it's hard to see, but I don't think I'll bother too much with the interior. <coughs> so if I try to put this up here with a single hand, I'll be right. On the same thing. Right. So, with another traditional Hornby VR wagon. The paint isn't exact, but I'm not too fast at this stage. Right. Try to get this thing railed properly. Get on there. Right, so that's, that's just the two, the original Hornby VR coach as Hornby painted. And my comparison of my paint job, nowhere near as top notch. Mind you, I'm not really that fast or bothered at the stage. So at least from here you can sort of get an idea. It's very close, very similar. 
And then shots I ever get of this damn carriage as I say is like this sort of angle. There's so many shots from this side and so few from the other. Ones that we've only just recently found of the other side. I haven't got them printed up yet. So the next step on from here, now the yellow lining's been painted. See the battery boxes on the floor detail painted. And they'll be doing that very soon. So for those of you modelling the Spear of Progress in HO or in N scale, you can see that it can be done. We'll be trying, well, they didn't do it properly. The power line carriages are more accurate of course. And you get them from um, Train World Hobbies in Victoria. The power line ones it is. If you can get these Hornby trying jobs for about 20 bucks a coach, you're doing alright. Now this this coach here would have cost me about 20 bucks Australian. And some of the others I've picked up about $30 Australian. So when you look at a 10 car train, 20 bucks each, versus 10 car train at $150 a coach, it does make a bit of a difference to the overall train cost. So, luckily, all these coaches cost me 20 bucks each. Well, not all of them. A couple of them cost me 30, as I was saying, but at least Hornby did try. That'll give you an idea, some of the detail. What I have got to do that says dining car. Right about here somewhere I've got to have the word parlour car. So I may have to uh, print it up on paper and glue it on. Unless I can find someone who can do me a decal. And I also need Victorian Railway's logo. So if I can get that logo as well. I should go up about here between these two doors or nearest the, the rest, uh, end door up about here. And that's basically all I will need doing to this carriage very soon. So by the time I finish this recording I'll have all the underneath painted black and have the um, the, the um, part down here going from taper to be more parallel. I'll get that sorted in just a moment. But yeah, certainly hope you've enjoyed my video. Conversion of a Hornby Trying tail car into a Spirit of Progress tail car. And yeah, 54 class project for the back here. Just going to redo some of that red lining and then go back into, into my collection. That's part of a previous project on, at the Kev's workshop side of things. So yeah, enjoy your modelling if you can. Hopefully I've inspired you. If you do want to, please share my videos on YouTube. Or you can like it and share it. I don't care. Chuck it around on Facebook. I don't mind, as long as I'm inspiring other modelers to go out there and have a go. Thanks for watching, bye!